Welcome back. It's me, your favorite really bad person. Some consider me the most divisive person in the movement because I'm mean. And I say it like it is. And that's okay by me. I will not be gaslit by the community in any form or fashion, not politically, and definitely not financially. So, take your politics elsewhere. My opinion is my opinion, and it will be voiced on Twitter as I see fit. <clears throat> Welcome back. We are going to talk about what Adam Aaron meant when he pounced, okay? And I don't think uh, people understand exactly what he meant. I didn't understand what he meant. But now, looking back, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, And you can start to see how this is all playing out, right? When Adam Aaron pounced on the situation to create Ape, okay? When he created Ape, he created an opportunity to raise capital. He did that. He raised a ton of capital, okay? So much <clears throat> that he was able to raise capital in, and pay off a specific amount of debt, which he wanted paid off, okay? Then the conversion back into AMC uh, was its own little trap, and the, the fail to deliver became an issue. And again, they were able to circumvent justice, all right, due to the fact that the SEC turned a blind eye, due to the fact that the DTCC turned a blind eye, due to the fact that the DTC doesn't, doesn't really want to uh, have this, this blow up in their faces, right? Collectively, the 1% are trying to sweep this situation under the rug, but they can't for that much longer. And Adam knows that legally they're getting caught up in, in this, this scheme and the deeper they go, the worse that it gets. Okay. And, um, I will explain how this pounce really works. Thank you. Divisive is a term used by those who don't understand. Um, so we're going to go with, you know, the pounce. So ape was created, right? And on the first day of ape, the volume on ape exploded, right? And everyone was buying it. Everyone wanted to raise capital for the company. And, and the thing just kind of got up to like, ten dollars and fifty cents and then they threw on the dark pools they halted it they did all this other stuff and then they brought it back down to eight uh let it sit there for a while and then they brought it down to like you know i think the all-time low was somewhere in the 70 cent range but again adam aaron was trying to raise capital right well this is the problem with what happened with ape and what's happening with amc is that there are two different options okay the hedge funds could have went two different ways okay they could have said, hey, you created Ape, okay? And we're gonna let supply and demand supply and demand take its course, okay? They, they, this was Adam's thing. If, if supply and demand happens, People will buy ape. They're already awarded ape, but they will buy more ape, and the price of ape will go up. And AMC will be able to sell shares of ape because there is no options chain. There is no ability to <coughs> write puts or naked puts to try and cover those shares that are needed. Right. So the value on ape goes goes up, but the price of AM uh, of ape goes down, which means they're they're multiplying the supply. Okay, so we take the supply, right? And we multiply it by X, okay? And then we have the demand. We don't know what the, what, what the multiples were, right? Because we don't know how many buy orders compared to sell orders that it were. But they tried to get everyone to sell and nobody sold except for like all the fucking like weirdos and dorky fucking YouTubers uh, out there. And then the demand for it was super high. So we had low supply, high demand, so they, they multiplied the supply to meet the demand, okay? Okay, so the demand was also many times uh, what it was, okay? So all of a sudden, 
This, this creating the artificial supply and demand, right, drives the stock down, right? So the art, they, they artificially created a supply which didn't meet the amount of demand, right? Because they took away the, uh, uh, the rarity of, the, of the, 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 the stock and it drove the price down. But that doesn't mean that they didn't sell multiple times the float, all right? Now, in this time period, Adam goes, listen, I could offer, what? What did he have, a billion shares of, of Ape? And I could just sell them all for 67 cents and get this amount of money and start paying down debt. But he didn't. He said, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to slowly let them play this game and see where they go with the stock, right? So over a time period, right? Over this time period, uh, over this time period, right? They have this problem because in the beginning, in the beginning, uh, they sold X amount of times the float, okay? And let's just say this is our timeline, okay? And let's just say in the first month, they sold five times the float, okay? And then it slowed down. And for the next six months, it was like three times the float and then three times the float and then two times the float before people were exhausted with the amount of money, right? But they still have all these floats that they sold so that they didn't, so that AMC wasn't able to raise capital off the share price that was out there, right? Now we do our 10 to one split. We move over into AMC. We start diluting the stock. We start raising capital. And guess what? The stock goes from $60 a share all the way down to four dollars right now basement level prices the price okay and this is why i talk about this stuff the market cap of this company is lower than the amount of money that it makes in a decent quarter okay so the market cap the market cap is the is the important thing to pay attention to right now okay because the market cap is somewhere around, I think we're at $4.20 or something like that. So $4.20 times 2.5 gives us somewhere like, we're like a $1.1 billion company, right? Well, we make more than $1.1 billion in a quarter. So the pounce was really, hey, these guys can keep this down here at this market cap at four twelve. motherfucker. I'm gonna reach into my Slimer here. Go get your merch, support your company. Slimer says go get your go get your merch, okay? Get your, mer your popcorn buckets. Got your Ghostbuster hat to go see the movie. Go rock a hat, so show your support for the company. But uh, here we go, right? We got a 1.1 Billion dollar company. This ain't fucking growing either. One point one billion dollar company. Okay, we got a one point one billion dollar company, and we got a four dollar and twenty cent share. Okay, now we're repeatedly buying and buying and buying, and maybe it takes us a month and a half to buy a float. At a month and a half. Every single month and a half, we're buying like 10 floats over a year's time, okay? So we haven't been at this price for this long, but you can see where I'm going with this. As the company stays down here, Adam can say, I'm not going to offer you guys any shares to get out of your short positions at this low level. And they say, well, what are you going to do? You, you might go out of business. And Adam goes, I'm not going out of business. I got Ghostbusters. I got merch. I'm selling $50, $50 million of merch. I got all this candy coming out and all the apes are buying it. I got movies lined up for the next three years. There's no strikes. What are you guys gonna do? What is your short thesis at this point? Because we're not going out of business. We can stay at $4.20 all we want. I, you guys can sell the float over and over and over again. 
But the reality is, is that we're just going to continue paying down debt. People say, well, you lost money on your last quarter. We lost money during a strike, during COVID. Those things are over. Dune 2 signified the start of the rally of movies that are going to come out in the, in the future. And let me tell you, the movie lineup that they're dropping now is just getting crazy. If you guys haven't seen the, the preview for Wild Robot, I think it's going to be Oscar nominated in multiple, uh, 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 for multiple awards. Horizon with Kevin Costner, that all-star cast. Megalopolis has been announced. That has been in the works for 30 years. Francis Ford Coppola is coming out with a movie. Megalopolis is coming out in the fall. Gladiator 2, Mufasa. I mean, dude, the, the movie lineup is just starting to get back to where it was in 2019 and 2020, okay? When, when movies were just like competing every single weekend for the top spot. There used to be competitions against other blockbusters on, 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 on weekends. We're back. And it's only going to get stronger. More production studios are coming out, and we might be one of them in the near future. There's nothing they can do to stop that. So as they continue to sell shares, you know, they could sell multiple times the float, you know, down here at 420. But as Adam starts to gain money, right, we have a billion dollars in cash and equivalents, okay? Let me see if I can get a marker that works real quick. So we've got, that's a little better, $1 billion in cash and equivalents, okay? Now, when you think of that number, you're like, okay, we've got a billion dollars in cash and equivalents. That means that we can like, you know, use some, some credit and then we have some cash, right? And as we use this cash, right, play with this, they, they know. And Adam knows that if they come any lower, any lower, Adam has options at his disposal. And people say, well, what kind of options would he have if the price goes lower? Well, there's share buybacks, right? There's share buybacks. And people are like, no, he wouldn't do that with the money. I wouldn't be so certain. I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to rule that out for Adam because he knows that the movie slate is picking up. And as we start to gain profits, as we start to build profits quarter after quarter after quarter from here on out, as the, as the chocolate keeps selling, as the merchandise keeps selling, as you guys keep going to the movies, because there are blockbusters coming out, they get deeper in trouble, okay? They've depended on the strike. They've depended on, on COVID. That was their whole short thesis. We're not going out of business. We're not going bankrupt. We're at prices lower than we were during COVID. There's, they can take it lower, but they can't do it, okay? They can't do it. Hang on to that for me, Slimer. Thanks, buddy. They can't do it. They can't do it unless we have no money. That's why bringing it down to these prices was like, okay, you can do that when we don't have money. But Adam raised a specific amount of money with a specific amount of shares to put them in a situation where they can't take it much lower without the threat of them buying back the shares. Now, he announces a share buyback program, all the shares, right, that were bought at $4.20, if they announce a share buyback and they go, oh shit, we gotta, we've got to get into that $1 billion, let's raise the price to $7. It doesn't help them because now options contracts are coming into play and now it kills them on the options contracts. They need to keep Max Payne going and they can't keep Max Payne going if they don't keep it around four dollars, okay, or three fifty, or four fifty, wherever they need to be. If this guy starts buying back shares on the cheap as we raise capital, they're going to want to get, you know, uh, uh, seven dollars a share for this billion. They want him to buy back at seven, at eight, at nine, so he can retire less shares. Because remember, any time that you buy back a share, you have created a scarcity. Of, sh of real shares. So if this guy goes out and buys 50 million shares at, let's say he, they drop it to three bucks, 50 million shares at $3 is $150 million. Do you see what I'm saying? So a share buyback, if they drop it to three, which is why they won't, would hurt them because they would create a scarcity of shares 
and the value per share would be drastically greater. You'd have a greater percentage of the company. And for the market cap to go down to three, right? At three dollars, at 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 twenty uh, uh, two uh, two hundred fifty million shares, you would have a seven hundred and fifty million dollar company that makes one point one billion a quarter minimum in a bad quarter. Okay, in a bad quarter, we make one point one billion with COVID restrict uh, 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 hanging up with with uh, writer strikes. We made one point one billion with all of that going on. All the layover from, from COVID, all the layover from freaking writers and actor strikes, all of that, and we still did $1.1 billion NP estimates. Now think, with a healthy movie lineup, what's going to happen? We're going to do significantly better than this. We're going to do significantly better than this because the movies are coming out, we have chocolate, we have popcorn, we have merchandise that's selling, and we have apes that are finally buying in and understanding how to support their own investment to get this thing going. They, they have no way out. Okay, remember, this is bigger than just, hey, this is a stock play over some little money. This is the entire market in a nutshell. The whole world revolves around this AMC moment right now. It does. Whether you want to believe it or not, you can believe Ian Carroll or the GameStop people. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about, dude. They have naked shorted this company since 2015. Adam Aaron has came out on the news. If you think GameStop is a big deal, why, ask them why they don't issue a dividend. Because they can't make money over there. This company makes money. And when it does make money, it issues dividends. And when it, dividends are issued on freaking synthetics or naked shorts, those people have to come out of their pocket to pay. And they can't last because movies will never stop being made. Movies will never stop being made. People will stop buying fucking video games at Game, GameStop, especially if they go digital, which they have. People will stop trading in physical copies and, and trying to have a, a, a and, and that marketplace has gone away. The marketplace for going to theaters has not gone away. It's actually gotten better. And as the economy gets worse, as things tighten up, as inflation hits, the movie theaters become the premier destination for entertainment. Not sporting events that cost $900 for a family, but movie theater night for 120 bucks for five people becomes an event. Rather than take your kids to, to go see a baseball game and spend $9 on beer, $15 on a freaking piece of pizza. Okay? This has always been the case. The, the movie theaters have always shined during recessions, okay, and during depressions. And it's only going to get better. Movies aren't going away. Movie stars are being created. You just, everyone thought, oh, this is the end of the movie star. You just had five of them in one fucking movie. You can name them off the top of your head if you want, but Zendaya and Timothy Chalamet and, and all the freaking young people, Austin Butler, they're coming out with movies nonstop now. This guy was just in Wonka, now he's in Dune, he's going to be in another thing. Uh, Austin Butler's going to be in The Bike Riders, which is going to be a huge hit. It looks like a fantastic movie. I mean, it just keeps going, guys. They're not going to stop making movies because guess what? They get paid to do it. And guess who fucking they need in order to freaking be the rich ass people that they are? They need you. They need moviegoers. They need theaters. Without the theaters, they don't make shit. You think some guy selling dick pills to fucking Netflix is going to pay Austin Butler $20 million for his next movie? Get fucking real, dude. Get real. Okay? Those advertisers are not in the business of financing entire projects. Okay, so this is this is where you're at and this is where you're going, okay? Adam's pounce was the creation of Ape, the raising of the capital, and the movement of, hey, you guys are being given a choice. Either you can allow me to raise capital now or you can continue to sell many shares of the float and bet on yourselves doubling and tripling and quadrupling and 5Xing and 10Xing down on this bet that, that movie theaters are going to be dead. But AMC, CEO Adam, and our CFO are so fantastic at managing money and managing the shares that now it's gotten to a point where the, the shorts are basically damned if they do and damned if they don't. If they bring it lower, they're going to sell multiple times the float. And then Adam can freaking just say, okay, I'll just buy the shares at this price. 
Because remember, he has options too. People say, oh, well, he can only issue shares. He can buy shares. He's got capital. He's got options, okay? And putting him in a position where he has money and he has shares. Hey, the price went to uh, $20 a share. All right, let's, uh, let's sell 25 million um, uh, shares and pay off some debt. Adam Aaron diluted. Okay, let's bring the price down to, to three bucks. Okay, well, I diluted at $20, and now $20 times, you know, uh, 25 million is, uh, you know, what, uh, $500 million. Okay, well, I got $500 million. You brought the price back down to four. Well, guess what? Now we have $1.5 billion to buy a $1.1 billion company. So now we're gonna buy the shares at $4. Oh, wait, you can't do that? Well, yeah, I just sold them. I sold them high and I'm buying them low. I'm gonna retire the shares low, I'm going to sell them at a super high price and I'm gonna buy them back lower. He's going to make the difference, if this is $20, right? If he's buying them back at 20, okay? Say they're $20, he's making the difference here on every share. So if he, if he sells them into the market at 20 and then buys them back, he makes a difference of 16 bucks for the company. Those shares appreciate. Every single share that gets retired and the rarity of the share is what matters. If you own one share of AMC and there's only one share available, that is a $1.1 billion share. If there's two shares, it's a $550 million share and so forth. You break it down into increments based on the shares, okay? It is incrementally better to have less shares. So they're caught right now. They're stuck right now. The more capital that you raise for the company gives Adam an opportunity to capitalize on this situation. And they're stuck. They don't know what to do. You see that line at $4 and it's just going back and forth and they're like, what do you think they're thinking? They're fucked. They're thinking they're fucked. We ain't leaving. I'm buying more every week. There's a bunch of people buying more every week. What are they gonna do? People say, well, are you really willing to wait four years for this to play out? I'm willing to wait fucking 10 years for this to play out. I get to be one of the richest people on the planet. My family will own the theaters for the next thousand years as they exist. If this world doesn't blow itself to pieces, my family will own a part of a movie theater empire that will go on for, the, for as long as history is, is history. As long as there is history, as long as life exists on earth, and movie theaters are around, I will, my family will own a piece of the number one movie theater empire and there's a good chance that it's gonna become a production studio. There's a, it's already in distribution. It's a fucking chocolate factory. Just, you know, think of, think of Amazon 20 years ago and be like, it's just a bookstore. And now 20 years later, people are like, wish I would've gotten Amazon. This is where you're at. It only gets better from here. You don't think we're gonna start selling fucking costumes and freaking creating movies and partnering with freaking, oh, hey, uh, do you want costumes in your online store? Hey, this is a size for men's adults. You go into a costume party, you go into, uh, are you doing something for Halloween? Do you wanna dress your kids up? Does she want a freaking uh, a Beauty and the Beast dress or a freaking uh, an aerial outfit or whatever this is? All of that shit can come to AMC. All of that stuff can come to AMC. All the costumes, all the ideas, all the merchandise, all the toys, it's all gonna come to us. Because guess what? They're gonna go where the money is and I ain't buying from fucking Toys R Us if the fucking corporations own it. I'm not buying from your, t your, your shitty toy store. I only buy from AMC. You want me to be a buy a popcorn bucket? I'll buy it from AMC. You wanna, buy me a, wanna sell me movie merchandise? I'll buy it from AMC. You wanna sell me kids toys, cars, freaking uh, Ghostbusters freaking uh, uh, cars, and, 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 and Transformers trucks and Barbie cars, I'll buy it from AMC. There's four million of us. Those corporations will go where the money is. If they can make money, they will come to us. Because I'm not going to them and neither, you don't have to either. You don't have to either. We can, we can deal with the companies that wanna deal with us. We can deal with, the, we're, in the, we're in the driver's seat, we're the consumer. We decide what we buy, okay? Go look at the go woke, go broke movement. You don't think Budweiser would kill to have its freaking to, to undo the mistakes of its past? 
Fuck around and find out, dude. We won't come to your store. We won't buy Budweiser. We won't buy this, we won't buy that. We can do the same thing with movies. Hey, we're not going to Cinemark or Regal or any of those things. We are only going to AMC now. We only buy these popcorn buckets. We only buy these toys. You're creating your own market, okay? Your own marketplace owned by the, the working class people of America, the people that freaking work at, as nurses, the people who are carpenters, the people who are plumbers, the people who are, who are engineers, the people who, who work at freaking Starbucks. You guys all get to be a part of a company that's gonna grow exponentially over the future, okay? And we have options. When he says he pounced, trust him, he did. And all these people saying, oh, he pounced. Where's the pounce, Adam? Where's the pounce? Their job is to create negative sentiment, okay? Their job is to make it so that you think something was supposed to happen that didn't happen, but something did happen. This guy raised capital and he put the, the company in a position for significant improvement by creating multiple revenue streams and the opportunity to now buy back shares and or sell shares if the price goes up in the future. Okay? There's nothing they can do. They can't compete with us. <clears throat> we can drive revenue. We can build a company. We can grow this, these revenue streams and there's nothing they can do. They can't stop. Dude, look at this. I bought a fucking Ghostbusters hat. It's the best $19 I'm ever going to spend in my life. People are like, well, dude, what are you going to do with it? I'm going to wear it once to a Ghostbusters movie. Okay? And people are saying, well, how is that the greatest investment? Because, dude, that $19 goes towards the revenue of my company, which grows the capital of my company, which allows me to maybe buy back shares or pay down debt of this company that I own. And guess what? I get to advertise the merch for my company. I get to make it cool to be a part of the movie going experience. Okay. And as it becomes cooler and more fashionable to, to, be a part of the movie going experience like cosplay is, okay? As we make it more like that, okay? Like cosplay-ish, not saying it's like cosplay or it will be cosplay, but as we, as we include that community in our marketplace, we grow revenue, right? And, and for the foreseeable future, we get to make money off of that, okay? But all we've got to do is pay down our debt. So I, I make an investment in the stock but I also make an investment in the company's revenue streams. I put money in the company's pocket so that my, my uh, investment can grow exponentially. That $19 that I put into this is gonna make me hundreds of dollars in the future, okay? You guys see, I got 15, 20, 30 popcorn buckets up there. People say, what are you gonna do with all them popcorn buckets? I don't know, maybe nothing, maybe something. Maybe I'll just give them away someday. Maybe they're collector's items, who knows? But guess what? That $700, $800 worth of popcorn buckets that's sitting up there, that's $700 that went in to my company. And that $700 can pay down debt and it can help build new revenue streams and it, it can help pay new employees. It can help develop new ideas. Yeah, it's only a little, but guess what? It, every single dollar helps. And I'm getting on pace. I'm, I'm, I'm putting the company on track. It's my company. I'm putting it on track to, to get out of debt and to start creating new revenue streams so that my company, the company that I own, and the board that we've voted on to, to, to represent us, because we're dumb as fuck and they're smart as fuck, the smart fucking people of the world that we, we have representing us on our board are on our behalf are going to create massive revenue streams, implement our ideas, make this thing fucking a 10 times better company over the next 10, 10 years and make us all rich as fuck. That is how biz this, this business works. That's how the stock market works. And guess what? The 1% is trying to stop you from raising capital so that you can't arm CEO Adam and that board with money to create new ideas. Do you know what we would do if we had an extra billion or $2 billion in books? We could create our own movies. We could have our own production studio by now. But guess what? They don't want that. They don't want that. They want you to not be able to create a production studio and to be struggling for money. To not be able to create, create stuff and create new revenue streams. But you are. You're creating chocolate. 
you're probably coming out with beer and wine. <clears throat> You've got a kick-ass merchandise selection. Guess what? They wouldn't be putting this shit out if we weren't making money. They wouldn't be putting popcorn tins out if you guys weren't if you guys weren't buying them and supporting them. You guys know the Doom popcorn bucket sold like you wouldn't believe. You guys did that, and you're supporting that company is putting money in this in the company's pocket to grow revenue streams of the future. These these <coughs> markets might not <coughs> last forever, and they might not be as popular as they are right now during the eight movement forever. But guess what? I guarantee if you get out of debt and you get a freaking dividend, you will try to keep these things as popular as possible for as long as you're alive. You will make this a thing to go and get that popcorn bucket. And even if you're like, hey, I got a popcorn bucket and I'm eating my popcorn and, oh, I see a kid over here. Here, here kid, you want this fucking Slimer popcorn bucket? Oh my God, thank you. That's so cool. Just give it to him. Who gives a shit? You're rich anyway. Just go to the movies. Here, I paid 20 bucks for a bucket. And some kid wanted the toy. Here, here's the toy. Here's the popcorn bucket. It'll make the kids think he's, he's going he's to be an AMC fan for the rest of his life. You created someone who, who is going to enjoy that experience for the rest of their life. They will remember you giving them those toys and helping them uh, 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 make, a, make a, a spectacle of going to the movies. They might not remember your face, but they'll remember some guy gave them a, an Optimus Prime truck or a Barbie car someday. That's all you have to do in the future when this, all, when this all takes place. This is what you have to do. That's it for the rest of your life. People are like, well, do I have to do all this other shit? Like, no, you're probably not going to have to work for the rest of your life because it's a multi-billion dollar company. And only AMC gets 100% of the take if they make their own movies. Understand this. Not Disney, not Paramount, not any of the, the production studios, not A24, not Angel Studios, not any of them, okay? Not the Warner Brothers Corporation. There's not a single production studio out there that if they make a movie, they get 100% of every single ticket they sell. Only AMC, with their production studio, when it comes out, can do this. So you have an opportunity to create something that gets 100% of the take in the movie theaters which means that you will make 30, 40, 50% more and are able to create faster uh, uh, production. You are able to multiply the projects that you can make and sign the best talent in the world to AMC when this thing takes off. And they're stopping you from letting that process to happen. They're stopping you right now. They're slowing it down as much as possible because they want you to get fatigued, they want you to get tired, they want you to run out of money, they want you to think that this is hopeless. But I'm telling you, this is how close you are. They're afraid of this number and they know that you can't understand market cap yet. And they know that you're not, you're not grasping that market cap idea yet. People are like, well, I own a few shares, I'm happy with what I have, that's fine. Do whatever you wanna do. Me personally, I am doing whatever I can to buy as much shares as I can because my family will own this for the next 100 to 1,000 years if it exists. They will never stop making movies. They will never stop the theater. They will never stop having actors. Even if AI takes over every single fucking dollar saved on making movies from artificial intelligence, my family, when they show it in theaters, will be front row. They will own all of that freaking money. That money will come to us. As, as owners of a business, as the rightful owners of a business. But they don't want you to know that they want to own this. They tried to take this over and you stopped them. This is the pounce. This is the pounce. This is the moment where they're like, I can't do anything. Look at the line, $4 for fucking uh, 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 five months. They're trying to fatigue you out. They're trying to bore you to death. They're trying to shake every single person. And the movies couldn't be, you, the movie lineup couldn't be better. The forecast for movies couldn't be better. The future of theaters couldn't be better. Dune 2 is setting, is, is, is setting a new uh, ex, a level of expectation for the scale of sci-fi movies. Avatar just did it with 3D. Uh, Taylor Swift just did it with mu musical experiences. Guys. This is the future of entertainment. 
This company is the future of entertainment and you get to own whatever you put into it at this point. But it, I, can, I can tell you this right now, stocks go up and stocks go down and people have, have freaking remorse when they miss out on opportunities to buy certain stocks. I'm not telling you this is a buy level or a sell level. I'm telling you that for me, I will not miss this opportunity personally, okay? I will start. I'll drink three coffees a day for breakfast and lunch, and then guess what? I'll have dinner at night. I don't fucking care. I don't care. You're not shaking me out of this place. People say, oh, well, are you struggling for money? I am not struggling for shit. Don't worry about me. I just prefer to put my money into AMC at these prices. I would rather buy this goofy fucking Slimer bucket and skip breakfast than, uh, and, and buy some shares than, than actually have breakfast. Well, Chris, that can't be healthy. Fasting's healthy. Drinking coffee's good for you. You know? What's, e what's gonna be even more healthy is when we're wealthy and we can do whatever the fuck we want with our time. Our mental health will improve, our physical health will improve, and that's the healthy that I'm trying to get to. I'm not just trying to have good health, I'm trying to have great health. So, you guys have a wonderful day. Keep going to the movies. Look at the movie lineup for the next couple weeks. Go hit it hard. Get that money on the books. Go pay off some debt. Go get some merchandise and make your investment better, okay? Because with, without us pushing these ideas, these revenue streams, this, and, and getting these profits, we're, we're just slowing the process down for ourselves, okay? We can wait on everyone else to do it. We can wait for the production studios to come in and, and really bolster the movie lineup. Or we can go buy some merch, we can go freaking buy some popcorn and drinks, we can go hit, hit, hit the bar and grab some alcohol, and we can go watch some extra movies every week and, and really accelerate this process so that we get paid. So just keep setting an example. Everyone that's out there that's posting pictures, keep posting pictures. You go to a movie, you take a picture of yourself at the movies, or you take a picture of your food, you take a picture of your peanuts, you take a picture of your freaking merch, and you put that shit on Twitter, and you let everyone know that you're still, you're still here, and you're not fucking going away. You guys have a great day.